Our good Tamayi, this is Gemara Inch Kalam Daf Yud Beis. All the learning for the month of Nisan has been sponsored by the Grun family, the Nishas Chaim Mordechai Ben Avtali Tzvi, the Nishamah Shavn Aliyah, the Schos of all the learning, the Art Side coming up very soon, should be a tremendous Schos Aliyah Nishmasai. Of course, our Chaylem Ben Ben Vega Chaim Ben Sara Shaul Ben Chayyu Shlomo Zivin Ben Reizah Yisrael Sara Bas Gnendel Ita Bas Yin Bas Chayyu Sayu Yisrael Ben Dilad Zer Peretz Ben Shav Leah Shav Bas Zamvi Shav Vega Shav Shilchan Avod Avin Ita Riva Shmo Ben Tila Dinu Chan Reizim Vuchay Bas Bin Lebracha Bas Tavim Musa Dinu Ita Bas Shin Mindel Zem Chav Tovia Ben. Avi Gael Fajas, even if he could very much the Chilis or Nasayli Huma Menachem Mendel Ben Taiba, Besay Sharchali Israel, as well as the Shoshidach for Atalea Basita and Menachem Mendel Ben Elisheva. We pick it up on the top of Yud Beis of Menalif and just one. Uh, detail yesterday we mentioned how we're about at the halfway mark and also some more, uh, I don't want to call it good news, is that coming up in a day or two we're going to have some easier Gemaras not as Kachim Karbanais the Gemaras like we have today but let's be see to the Shemaya forge forward into Mesech Lashkalim says the Mishnah Halacha Dalit HaMaktish Nechasav Vayub and Devarim Ru'iyam the Karbanais at Sibar. This should hopefully sound familiar because this was part of yesterday's daf. So when his Maktish is the Entire property he says my entire estate, my entire house is hectish, is given to the base of Megdash. What do you do with everything? So if you have an item which are roughly for carbonice, then Nisten Lumnan Bisharan Divir of Akiva. Says Rav Akiva, you give the item itself straight to the workers as their wages. Which of course everyone here is wondering, how do you do that? The item has Kadusha, you were Maktish it. So let's take one moment to peek down over here in the Tiklin Chaditin, that it says over here, the first one in the, uh, the second one, I'm sorry, in the Mishnah, Yinasul Uman Bisharan, V'yaitzil Achulan. And by giving it to the workers, it makes it Chulan. Afal P, so the Tiklin Chaditin addresses everyone's issue. Afal P, Dindavar Acher Nechmas Tachtof. Usually, when you deconsecrate something, you take the Kedush from A and you put it on B. That was yesterday's old Gemara. Here, you're just taking the item and giving it to the person. Still, Rabbi Kiva says that's allowed. Why? Famous Shita, the Kesavar Hektish, Mishalal Alamilacha. Rabbi Kiva holds because the fact that Taira says, V'asuli Mikdash, Yitei HaMalacha, Nasim in a Hektish. Rabbi Kiva holds you're allowed to deconsecrate something by paying for the wages because the wages says Rabbi Kiva is something which also has at some level Kedusha. Therefore, says Rabbi Kiva, you're allowed to take the item that is Hektish and pay it directly to the workers. Amrloi ben Azai, ben Azai says Rabbi Kiva, min Amida. I'm not happy with what you just said for the reasons that we just spoke out. You can't give something of Hektish straight to a worker. Of course, arguing with the premise of Rabbi Kiva, arguing with this idea that you're allowed to give uh, pay for work with items of Hektish. Ella says Rabbi, Ella says Ben Azai, Ma'afrishis man Scharo Umnin. You, this is now we're going to do basically the same thing we said. We we did yesterday. You separate the wages you have to pay to the craftsmen. And then you're machalel, this item which is hektish, onto the money. And you give the item to the workers. Bishar and has their wages. Now the item itself, whatever the item is, has no kedusha because you took the kedusha off, you put it on the money. The item is goes to workers. And then then you rebuy back the item with the new coins from the from the craftsmen, and that Ben Azai obviously concurs with the opinion that we said, similar to what we said yesterday. Says the Mishnah further, so that was Machlaikis number one in the Mishnah. Hamaktish Nechasav, idea number two. Ben Similarly, you Maktish all your properties, and you have an animal which you which is fit to use for the Mizbeach. Zacharim Munekiva is Rebbe Lezer Aimer comes like Rebbe Lezer. Zacharim Yimachru. You sell it for the need of the oilois. And the kevais, the female animals you sell for the needs of the shlamim. And do the mayhem. And their money, Yiblu Imshar Nechas of Lebedek Habayis. Those are the crucial words. Says Rav Lazar. And the statement is that Stam Hektish is Lebedek Habayis, is the opinion of Rav Lazar. Rav Lazar says, when I say this item is Hektish, I don't specify what, where, and how. I have male animals, I have female animals. What do I do with these animals? Says the Mishnah, you sell them for the usages of Eilis, you sell the females for the usages of the Shlamim, and what do you do with the money? And the money goes straight to the Pedic Abayis, as Rebbe Lazar is of the opinion that when you're Maktish something, when you make something holy, you give it to the Mesa Mikdash without specifying, and the money automatically goes straight to the Pedic Abayis. Rav Yeshua disagrees, comes like Rav Yeshua, and he says, if you were Maktish a male animal, the animal itself 
goes directly, and you are makravit as an oil, of course. An oil has to be a male. When a kiva's yimachal is archa is evil shalamim. On a kiva you sell first shalamim if you even demeim oilais. And then the shar and the chaz, everything else, if you're maktish, a table, a chair, items which aren't actually karbanais, then yimachal yiblu lebedi kabais. Of course, if Yeshua is disagreeing, Rav Eliezer, Rav, Rav, excuse me, with Rav Eliezer, Eliezer. and Rav Yeshua is holding that Stam Bedek Abayis is Likavoya, go straight to God. And therefore Rav Yeshua holds that if you have Zacharim, you'll have to bring it straight as a carbon law. Rav Eliezer said no. Rav Eliezer Stam Bedek Stam. Hektish, I'm sorry, is the Bedek Abayis. And Rav Eliezer therefore always said everything goes to Bedek Abayis. Amr Rav Akiva, right? He has different Rav Eliezer, and different Rav Yeshua. I like Rav Eliezer better, says Rav Akiva. Why? Rav Eliezer, his shvaz me dice. He made everyone equal. Rav Eliezer didn't start the friendship between male and female, and extra, etc., etc. Rav Eliezer said everything, the Bedek Abayis. Says Rav Akiva, I like Rav Eliezer. Rav Yeshua, Chalak. If you should differentiate between what type of animal? Amr Papius, Shamati is different name. Papius says, I can hear both sides of the coin. Hamaktish Beferush, Kedev Rav Eliezer. If you did it Beferush, and you said, I want animal A to be Kaddish, I want animal B to be Kaddish, I want animal C to be Kaddish. Then I hear, like Rav Eliezer said, that what? That some of the animals are going to go, I'm sorry, that everything is going to go, but Hamaktish Stam, sounds a bit counterintuitive, so let's hone in, Hamaktish Stam, if you just say everything is Hektish, then Kedivir Rav Yeshua, because by the fact that you made it Stam, by the fact that you did not separate, you did not delineate, you did not specify any animals, that shows us, like Rav Yeshua, that shows us that you're allowing it up to the what's supposed to happen. So if it's a Zachar, I'll go to an Ayla male. If it's a female, then you're going to sell it. Because you didn't differentiate anything, it comes out, perhaps a bit counterintuitive, that you're going to separate where it is. Where it says, Rav Papi, as I understand Rav Yezer, if you said, I want animal A, B, C, and D, why else did you speak out that you want a Zachar and a cave of this and that must be that they all should go to the same place. So two different approaches how to deal with this Machlech, Rebbe Lezer, and Rebbe Yeshua. Rebbe Kiva taking the side of Rebbe Lezer. Rebbe Papi is coming along and explaining that it's going to depend on your wording. The Mishnah concludes with segment number three of the Mishnah. Hamaktish Rechasa Vayib and Dvarim Ru'uyin Likabi Mizveach. You mark this your properties. And you have some items like we speak about, like we brought in the Mizbeach, Yena, Yishman, and Vaifais. Flowers, I'm sorry, wine, oils, and birds. Of Lazar, Aymer, Yemach, Lazarche, Isa, Amin. You sell for that item. The other with Demei, and Mailos, Vishar, and Chazim, Yablu, Lebedi, Gabayis. Similar dinner of Eliezer, like we saw a moment ago. But let's just remind, remember these words that Eliezer is teaching us right now. That you're going to sell that min, and with their money, you're going to bring an ayla. This is going to come back to us at the end of today's daf and Amr Beis. Says the Gemara, Ha Maktish Vachul Karbana Isibra. This is the first part of the Mishnah that the Mishnah taught us that if you're Maktish your properties and you have items that are fit to be used for communal services, we said in Machlekes or Vikivan and Benazai, whether you take the item itself. Pay directly to the worker, the Chiddush of Akiva. They go, let even pay workers with hectic items. Ben they said, no more conventional like we saw yesterday. That you deconsecrate the item onto money, you give the item to the worker, and then you buy back the item with new coins. Says the Gemara of Yechel and Aymar Ketairis. This is the same thing of Ketairis like we saw yesterday. Amar of Aisha, meaning the case of the excess Ketairis, that you'll use that, you'll deconsecrate it onto money, you'll take the Ketairis to pay the workers, and then you'll buy it back. Amar of Aisha Tipotar, we could explain, but Uma Mishal based off us. No, you don't have to necessarily learn. We're talking about Ketairis. We saw this yesterday. Rather, we can explain. We're talking about the specific workers of Beis Avtina, Sheyonaito Bizcharai, Ketairis. And they were taking their wages, the Ketairis. And the reason being, because that was that that was which they worked in the Beis Amigdash. My time with the Ben Azai. So what is the reasoning of Ben Azai that said you have to deconsecrate it, you can't pay it directly to the worker like Rav Kiva? Like we explained, Rav Kiva holds only way to be Mishalel, to remove the sanctity of an item which is Akdish. You cannot do it with the Malacha like Rav Kiva holds. Rather, you have to do it on Tamani, which is obviously the more conventional understanding. Ending. Says the Gemara, five lines into the Gemara, the two dots, Taman Tanina, we learned over there. Yeish be Kodshei Badikabayis. There are cases of Kodshei Badikabayis, Shastaman Ektish, Shastu Badikabayis, that Stam, the item goes to Badikabayis, Hektish Badikabayis, Chal Alakol, that it's going to apply to everything. 
And not only is it going to apply to everything, but umayalim begiduleyem, and there's going to be a din ilah from the items that come off of it, the off groups or the offsprings, if it's dealing with an animal, that item will retain some of the kedusha. And since it's going to retain some kedusha, there's going to be a din of mi'ilah. The chiddush here being that when you're giving something bias, this is the beginning of a discussion whether we're holding the item itself has sanctity like we spoke about yesterday, whether there's inherent Kedusha, Kedusha's Hagof. So the Gemara is saying, yes, so much so that there's going to be a Din Mi'ila on the Gidulehan on the offsprings. Ve'ein ba'em hanayu likoyhanim, and the Koyhanim cannot benefit from it. Why could the Koyhanim not benefit from it? Because it is a Din of Bedeka Bayis. Bedeka Bayis is not a personal item for any one kayin. Rather, it goes to the base of Mikdash at large. So those are the three different dinim that we're learning in the Mishnah that there is the kachim of Bede Gabayis, that when you said it's Stam, it's going to go to Bede Gabayis, it's going to apply to everything, the offsprings, shoots the offsprings, will have a din of Kedusha, and the Kayanim cannot get any benefit from it. Omar Rav Hananiya, the Rav Eliezer, he, so Rav Hananiya comes along, and says, this is the opinion of Rav Eliezer. What Rav Eliezer? Again, let's remind ourselves, this was Machleik, is Rav Eliezer, and Rav Yeshua in the Mishnah. What is the din of Stam Kedish? Is the din of Stam Kedish, that it goes to Bede Gabayis, is the din that it goes to Gabayis, it goes to a carbon. Says of Hanania, the Mishnah we just quoted is going with the opinion of Rav Eliezer, which we know means Rav Eliezer. They dropped Aleph in the Yerushalmi, meaning that the Stam Hektish is going to go to the Bet Like we learned in our Mishnah, Hamaktish Nechasaf. If someone makes Hektish his properties, Vaisa Ben Behema Ruya Al Gabi Mizbech, and he has an animal that is fit to brought in the Mizbech, Zacharim Munekevais, what do you do with those? So the Mishnah taught us this Brisa, mimicking the din of the Mishnah, Rav Eliezer Aimer, Zacharim Yimach Lazarche Elos, he gave you the Mark Lazarche Shalmu to name, people who shine a chasla, belly Gabais. So what do we see very clearly? We see very clearly that. The din of Stam Hektish is that it goes to Bedek Abayis, and therefore, since it's going to go to Bedek Abayis, it's going to be Kedusha on to the item itself. Omar Rav Yechanan, now going deeper into this opinion of Rav Eliezer, the opinion of Rav Eliezer, again, one more time, being that when you say an item is hectish without specifying for what, where, or how, you don't say what to do with the item, you say, I'm giving it to hectish, my whole estate, my whole house, etc. We say it goes straight to Petek HaBayis, for the upkeep and different things in the Beis HaMikdash. So Omar Rav Yechanan, time of Rav Eliezer, where does he get this from? From the Pasuk and the Torah of Ishki Aktish, as Beis HaKadosh Hashem. The Torah teaches us that if a man makes holy his house to Hashem, but my with what do we uh, fulfill a different basic? If it's referring to a regular house, but Kvark Sivit already said a different basic, he's going to redeem his house. So why did the basic have to tell me that he acted as basic? And then a different basic tell me he got his basic. Two different psukim seemingly talking about the same item of being maktish and making sanctity onto your house. What are we referring to? Someone makes Hektish his properties. Mikan, what do we see from here? Shestam, Hektish, is the From here we see the extra time that the Torah spoke about being Maktish, your estate, your house, your properties. Teaches us that Stam Hektish goes to Bedek That is the opinion of Rav Eliezer. Oh my Rav Zero, Rav Chuna B'Shem Rav. Bima Pligin. What is the Machloikes? Bimaktish Nechasav. The whole Machloikes in the Mishnah. Rav Yezer versus Rav Yeshua. Rav Yezer holding Stam, it goes to Bet Gabais. Rav Yeshua holding Stam, no, it goes as a carbon. Comes along Rav Zira, Rav Chuna, Bishim Rav explains that this whole Machloikes is if you were Maktish, your estate. Avu Bimaktish Edroi. If you said my entire flock, all the animals are Hektish, Kolama Modai, everyone admits, Shehula Mizmeach. Everyone is going to admit that it goes to Gavaya, it goes to Mizmeach. And not Lebed Gabayis. That is the first opinion of Rav Zira, Rav Chuna B'Shem Rav. Rabbi Ba, Rav Chuna B'Shem Rav, explains, no, Ma again, what the, he explains that the Machlaikis is, be Makdish Edra, the exact opposite. That if you're Makdish animals, that's when there's the opinion of Rav Yeshua that says it's going to go like Gavaya. Avu be Makdish the Chasav, Kulam Imoideh Shud Lebed Gabayis, then everyone will admit to the opinion of Rav Eliezer, goes to Lebed Gabayis, 
two different ways of explaining the Machloikas of Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua. Are they arguing specifically about only when you're Maktish your properties, but if you're Maktish your animals, then Rabbi Eliezer will fold to Rabbi Yeshua and agree that it goes like it goes to our carbon. Or are they arguing specifically about it being Maktish your flock, but if you're Maktish your estate, then Rabbi Yeshua will fold to Rabbi Eliezer and hold that it goes le Bedekavais. Explains the Gemara, Al Daiti to Rabbi Zira Nicha. According to Rabbi who has the first opinion, it makes a lot of sense. The Kasha al the Rebbe Ba, Behima, al Kasha the Rebbe Ba. It's a, but it's a question on Rebbe Ba. Behema loy lemizbeachi. Is a Behema not lemizbeach? The Mishnah spoke about being maktish an animal. And yet the Mishnah seemingly said that there's going to be a machloikas. Explains the Gemara, no. It's true that in his estate he had animals. So we thought from the fact that in the Mishnah it spoke about the case where he had animals, that it told us what to do with the animals, seemingly concurred with the first way of explaining Rav Zi'ira, showing me that the whole Machlokes is when you're Makdish your estate, your entire estate. But if you'd be Makdish your animals, then Rav Yeshua is going to fold, explains the Gemara, no. The case of the Mishnah is he had animals. But yet, why did he not explain anything? Why didn't he say it's for this carbon or that? So no, the defense is of Rabbi Ba is from the fact you have animals in front of you and you don't mention a carbon that seemingly shows that you don't want it to be for a carbon. Maybe that is specifically the reason. So we end off with two different ways of explaining explaining the Machleik is Rav Eliezer and Rav Yeshua, Machleik is Rav Zira and Rav Ba, whether Rav Eliezer will be moida to Rav Yeshua, or Rav Yeshua will be moida to Rav Eliezer. Rav Yechanan Amar explains Rav Yechanan five lines from the bottom of the Amid. Lo yishniya hi ha-makdish nechasav, hi ha-makdish edroi, hi ha-makdish A third way of explaining the Machleik is Rav Eliezer and Rav Yeshua comes along Rav Yechon and he weighs in and he explains lo yishniya hi ha-makdish nechasav, hi ha-makdish edroi, hi ha-makdish edroi, They argue in all cases, neither is maida to the other. They argue with your makdish, your properties, they argue with your makdish, your edroi, your flock, your cattle. In both cases, we have a full Machleik is Rav Eliezer and Rav Yeshua, three different ways Ways of learning the Machlaikas. Says the Gemara of Chuna Bishim Rav, Rav Avua Bishim Rav Yechran, Kadshe Badikabayes, Shapoidan Tamimin, Yotza Lechulin. You have Kadshe Badikabayes continuing the discussion that we've been having. We just spoke about the Machlaikas, whether Stam Hektish is Labadikabayes. But now you have an item that belongs to Labadikabayes, the Besam Hektish. And you go and you redeem that animal. You have an animal. An animal belonging to the Besam Hektish. The animal has no mum. It's a Tomim, very important. It could theoretically be brought as a carbon. But you go and you redeem it. What is the status of that animal after the redemption? Says Rav Chuna B'Shem Rav Rabbi Yavua, Yotzel Chulin, it's 100% Chulin, it's a perfectly fine, non-holy animal. You deconsecrate it, you redeemed it, everything is fine. And the Gemara explains, Masni Zomer came, we've arrived from our Mishnah, not our Mishnah, we've arrived from... A different Mishnah, a Mishnah in Chulin, that says, that when you have an item, and after you redeem it, the Allah is that the item goes and it is mutter. Seemingly, why is it mutter? Seemingly, it goes 100% Luchulin. As we turn over to Amir B, he says, the Gemara, no, Raya. Rav Chizka, B'Shem Rav Chizka, Tipotter, he explained, Shepodan Tmimin Vohomimu. That Mishnah over there in Chulin, that's not a Raya. Because that Mishnah over there was discussing when he got a mom. So once he gets a mom, then of course I'll agree with you that if you redeem an animal with a mom, that it has no holiness right now because it has a mom. But in our case, we're talking about a Tmimin, an animal without a mom. So maybe when it doesn't have a mom, maybe. He doesn't go to the so no raya from that Mishnah. Comes along the Gemara, and the Gemara explains that Rav Yisro B'Shem Rav Chista, flipping the coin, says Mas Nisan Amrakim. The Mishnah's a raya to the second way of explaining to Rav Chista. The Mishnah's a raya to the, that what the Vlad and the Chelvin Aser Lacha Pidyanim. The Mishnah over there continues to explain that it's actually going to be Aser if it has a mom. It'll be Aser after the Pidyan. What does it sound like? Sounds like it's only usher after it because it has a mum. But what would that lacha be? That if it did not have a mum, then it would sound like it would, yes, retain some kedusha. If it retains some kedusha, it sounds not like the opinion of Rav Yechran. Again, we started with an Amin Aleph that Rav Chuna B'Shem Rav Avua, in the name of Rav Yechran said that once you redeem something, it's one hundred percent chulin. 
you can use it for anything. Then we try to bring a riot to that. The Gemara flipped the coin. The Gemara is now saying the opposite. No. Only if it has a mom, then you redeem it, will it go lechulin. But the riot is, if it didn't have a mom, then when you redeem it, it still would retain some sanctity. And that is the two ways of learning what would it didn't be by pedia if you redeem an animal without a mum. Rav Chizkiah b'shem Rav Yisa kachei bet gabai shapadin tamimin yotza lechulin. Quoting the same din, and he says that if you have kachei bet gabai that you redeem, it goes lechulin. Ain taimar. Don't say lo yatsa lechulin. Hey, because if you're going to tell me that it doesn't go lechulin, hey, kachei mis veachulin al kachei bet gabai. How is it possible that in our Mishnah, our Mishnah seemingly arrived back to the first opinion? The first opinion of Rabbi Yechanan was what? When you redeem something, it goes to Chulin. There's no more sanctity. Says the Gemara, we've arrived to that from our Mishnah. Because what does our Mishnah discuss? Our Mishnah, at the end of the Mishnah, that was the line that we highlighted at the end to hone in on this final din, that when you sell items of Bedek Abayis, what did the Mishnah teach us? The Mishnah taught us that you're going to use it as a Oila. How are you going to use it as an Oila? If after you sell it, again, I have an animal here. I sell this animal. I redeem it. If the animal retains some Kedusha, I can't now go bring it as an Oila because that's an issue of bringing Kedusha A to Kedusha B, which we know is not allowed. We saw that yesterday. Rather, we see clearly from a Mishnah, says the Gemara, Raya to the first opinion of Yechlan, that after you redeem it, the animal has no Kedusha, then you can go and bring it as an Ayla. Because now it's a new carbon, and that's a Raya to the first. We have Raya's both ways. Says the Gemara, continuing, what would the Alacha be if it's a Balmum, and the Kachim is Beach is Chal on it? So what would the, the what would, um, Sorry, the Gemara now is saying back. I'm sorry. One more time. A little bit difficult to read. Bali mumim kachim is Says the Gemara, it's true. You might have a raya from our Mishnah. But it's but Rav is going to answer, it's not really a raya. Why not? Because maybe there's a Kedusha Dira Banan. Says Rav Chista. Rav Chista cannot fathom taking an item, a carbon, redeeming it, and viewing it as if it has no Kedusha at all. 100% chulin. Says Rav Chista, you think you have a raya from our Mishnah? I agree with you. Good Raya. But I still disagree. It's still impossible. You can't have an animal that goes from being holy to nothing. Rather, it must be, says Rav Chista, this is going to be Kedusha de Rabbanon. What's going to be the Kedusha de Rabbanon? Leida Armila, with regard to what? Legiza Avaida, as we know, there's other halachas that the shearings and the offsprings are not allowed to be used for different sanctities. Says Rav Chista, there's going to be a de Rabbanon din that this animal, the offsprings and the shearings will retain some Kedusha, because if Chizda cannot fathom how it's possible, if not, that last line that we just read, we're learning it one way, that is Rav Chizda's uh, counter uh, to Rav Yechon, many different ways of learning that line of the Gemara. Says the Gemara, a new piece of Gemara. Hefrish nekeva le'aylasai. So it separates a nekeva for an ayla or for a Pesach, ula shamai, which we know is obviously impossible because an ayla Pesach and Hashem has to be from a zacha, from a male. So we have three opinions. What do you do with this animal? This nekeva, this female animal. The first opinion that Anakam is Isa Tamura. The animal retains some kedusha, and you have to deconsecrate it onto another animal. Because there is some Kedusha. But obviously you can't bring it as that carbon because it's a female. Rav Shimon Aymer, no. Which we'll see in a moment why. But with regards to Pesach and Hashem, there's no Kedusha at all. Perhaps it's Bedek but there's no real Kedusha on the animal. The second opinion. Rav Shimon Ben Yudai, Rav Shimon there's no Kedusha on the animal at all because females cannot be used, a female animal in a keva for Ayla Pesach and Hashem. Says the Gemara, let's explain these three opinions. Rav Shimon. Where did Rav Shimon get this fact? There's a difference between an Ayla and an Asham and a Shlam, a Pesach and a Shlam, a Pesach and an Asham. Explains the Gemara. You know why? Because she can Matsino Nekeva Baif, Kshira Lavai Ayla. Because there's a potential possibility of a Nekeva bringing an Ayla. How could a, a Nekeva be an Ayla? Of a bird. A bird, a female bird, is allowed to be an Ayla. So it says Rav Shimon, by a carbon Ayla, there's a precedent that a female could be used. So therefore, I'll let it to be 
used whenever you were makdish a female animal for an oila, but nothing else. Vamar Rav Yechanan, time to Yeshua ben Yehuda. What's the reason of Yeshua ben Yehuda? Shem ben Yehuda said nothing works. If min be'mina yuchalik, if min within its min doesn't work, a love, which we'll see in a minute. Kol shkin min she'ena mina. The Gemara now explains. Ezu min be'mina yuchalik love. What does that mean? Kadad the Tani like we learned in the Brisa. Awesome ben Shana ve'evi ben Shnayim. If I have a carbon ashram, it has to be a one year old animal. I bring a two year old animal. Or ben Shnayim ve'evi ben Shalish, which is a gear, so they change to ben Shana. Or you have to have a carbon of a two year old animal and you bring a one year old animal. Lo yatsa. So says Rav Shimon. Says, um, Rav Shimon ben Yehuda, this is min b'minoi. It's the right type of animal. It's just the wrong age. And the wrong age invalidates the carbon entirely. So says Rav Shimon ben Yehuda, if the right animal but the wrong age invalidates it, certainly the wrong gender will invalidate it. And therefore says Rav Shimon ben Yehuda, there's no Kedusha at all. Amar Rav Yechanan, Rav Shimon, Rav Yeshua, Shnei Mamur Davar Echad. Rav Shimon, who is the first opinion that we just said, sorry, the second opinion that differentiated between an Ayla, which he said could be potentially possibility possible with a Nekeva from an Ayla, whereas the Pesach and Asha not, is the same din as Rav Yeshua. Kama de Rav Yeshua, that just like Rav Yeshua said, Amar Nekeva la Ayla, loy kitcha. Just like we saw Rav Yishu in our Mishnah. Rav Yishu in our Mishnah said, if you're Makdish an item and you have a female item amongst the flock, said Rav Yishu, if it's an Akeva, you sell it and the money is used as an Ayla. If you're selling it and the money is used as an Ayla, it must be that Rav Yishu is agreeing in principle with Rav Shimon that there's some potential possibility of a female being involved in an Ayla. And that's the reason why he says you sell it and the money uses as an Ayla. When, that's Rav Yishu. And Rav Shimon Amar an Akeva law so those are the two opinions of Shimon and of Yeshua holding the same halacha. Says the Gemara, Ain Tamar, no, not necessarily. Kachik Dush Zagov, Yira. I'm sorry. Ain Tamar, Kachik Dush Zagov, Yira. I'll tell you what the Raya is. Because if, when in the Mishnah of Yeshua said that when you're Makdish the animal as an Ayla or any carbon, and it's a female, and Rabbi Yeshua said you sell it and use the money as an Ayla, it must be there's no real Kedusha. Must be holding like Rav Shimon that there's this potential to bring an Ayla so you could bring the substitute. Why? Because if there was real Kedusha, what would you have to do? You have to let it graze until he gets a mom. For the fact that you don't do that is a raya that Rav Shimon and Rav Yeshua are saying the same din but Amar Rabbi he disagrees and the girsa, easier girsa is Amar Rabbi Ain Ani Raya Estivri Rav Shimon Bepesach I do not say see the opinion of Rav Shimon in a Pesach why? Shamay Se Pesach Ba Shlamim you know why? Because a Meiser of a Pesach could be a Shlamim. Meaning there's also the potential for an Akeva for a female to be brought as a to be brought as a shlamim in the case of a carbon pesach, which we dealt with extensively in Psachim, that a female could be a shlamim. Says the Gemara, one second. If Rebbe is taking a problem with Rav Shimin with regards to the carbon pesach, the shlamim aspect of it, Tisha says the by an asham. Why? Because what's Allah? Hashem Meister Asham Ba'ayla. And we know that an Ayla could be brought from a female in the case of a bird. So if Rebbe is arguing and saying, Rav Shimin, what's going on here? A Pesach could potentially be brought from an Akeva female by the Meister, the excess of the Shlamim. We should say the same thing by the Asham. Answers the Gemara, Rav Avin, Im Hektish, Pesach, Ba Shlamim, Kufai, Ba Shlamim, Kufai, Karav Shlamim, Im Hektish, Asham, Ba Ayla, In Kufai, Karav Ayla. There's a very big difference, says the Gemara, that in the case of the Pesach, this animal itself, if it's leftover Pesach, is a Shlamim. This female animal goes straight into Barna Shlamim. But in the other case, by the Moiser Asham, if it's left over, it itself can't be the Shlamim. Rather, you let it get grazed, you let it get a mom, and you sell it. So it's not exactly the same. Now the Gemara says, not either Mahu Kedain or my plea, what's the Machlaikas between Rav Shimon and Rebbe, Hahin Amar, Hektish Tamim Hektish, Rav Shimon holds that when you're Maktish the item, it's when you're Maktish the Damim, it's a Hektish just for the money, but not the item itself. Hahin Amar Hektish Kufa Yaktish, whereas Rebbe holds no, that the item itself becomes Hektish. Again, Rav Shimon is holding that when you're Maktish this female, this Nekeva for Kaman Pesach, what do you obviously have in mind? Rav Shimon says, not for the animal itself, you just have in mind for the Damim, for the value. Whereas Rebbe says, no, since there is a way that the Meiser Pesach is a Shlamim, must be you had in mind that the item itself becomes Kadosh. Let's just 
to see one more line and then we'll finish one more little piece. Rav Zira B'Shem Rav Shimon Lakish Taimut of Yeshua Ta'abira What's the reasoning of Yeshua? We spoke out in Amun Aleph the reasoning of Rav Eliezer, we spoke about the fact that he learns it out from a Pasuk, and that's how we know that Stam Hektish is the Bethik of Ayis. But now we want to know, according to Rabbi Yeshua, that the reasoning of Rabbi Yeshua that he holds Stam Hektish is Ligavaya, where does he get it from? So says the Gemara, Dabral Aram Vel Banov, Val Kobani Yisrael Vamarta Alehem, Ish Ish Mi Beis Yisrael. So from this passage, we learn that I call Karav La'ila. That everything you always have in mind for an Ayla. Lir Tzayinchem says the Taira. Tamim. That it has to be. Lir Tzayinchem Tamim. Zachar. The passage continues. Menayin Afil in the cave. So how do we know that it has to be even female animals? Tamal Aymar Babakar. The rabbi says in the cave. That's where Yeshua says that even in the event that you're being maktish in the cave, you have kavana stam hektish as the gavaya to bring a carbon ayla. Rabbi Yitzchak Be'er of Lazar Shal, Ksiv Zachar, Vat Amr Tvabaykar. The rabbi says in the cave. What do you mean? Maybe the fact you just told me that Baykar comes to be, ex- include females, but the Pasuk says males. With the Kavasan, similarly, Ksiv Tamim, Vat Amr Tvabaykar, the rabbi says Maybe you should tell me that the extra the word Babakar comes to teach me Balmom. If it's coming to include something which argues with its own Basik, maybe it should include Balmom. Explains the Gemara. No, my Benayu, what are you asking? Rav Amr Shifta, it's Katka, Benayan. It's clear. It's like the weaving guy, meaning it's clear. We see the difference. A Balmom is never kosher. Whereas Nekeva sometimes is kosher. And we'll pick up from here tomorrow.